It's Juvenis. Imagine that you, God has taken a tithe and you two have taken a tithe, enough of the tithe now. You have collected enough tithe. If you have not invested it well, that's your business. Start giving back to the people because you are not under any allowance by the Holy Spirit or by the doctrine to live a life of luxury while other believers around you suffer. And I'm going to prove it to you. We're taking the first Bible reading from the book of Acts. Chapter 4, 32. Just type Acts 4, 32. Um, I prefer using Bible Hub because Bible Hub gives you millions, not millions, a lot of translations. You have new international versions. Uh, you have all the translations. Let me show you what Bible Hub looks like on the internet so you guys can see. Can you see? You have Berrien Bible, New International Version. Oh, so let's pick, let's pick the New Living Translation. So click on the New Living Translation. Oh. Can you see that clause? What they owned was not their own. So they shared everything equally. Are you guys seeing it? They shared everything equally. The Apostle Jesus... And God's great blessing was upon them because those who own land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. They did not bring, you see, those people are saying they give 100%. This particular Bible verse, they have been used to much misinterpretation. No? Uh, they gave those days, you know, the disciples, they didn't need to ask you to bring 10% because they gave 100%. They gave 100%, not the poor, only the, those who, the Bible did not say everybody. They said those who had houses. Let's read it again. Let me enlarge it just in case your phone is far. I'm going to show you. Because those who owned land or houses would sell. Not everybody. Those who owned land and houses. If you don't own land and houses, you are not obliged by the disciples to make any offertory. Yes, the widows might in the temple Jesus was there. He was not there as the leader of Christianity or the pillar of our faith or the foundation upon our, which our belief system is built. He was there in his earthly form. It was not a temple of Christianity. It was a temple of Judaism. So yes, the widow gave her mind. And that's another monetized scripture. Jesus spoke of sacrifice using money. Not speaking of money. It wasn't, he wasn't trying to, he was trying to tell you the amount of sacrifice you need. You don't, like for instance, someone called me yesterday and said, I don't have any money, I'm a student. How do I take part in the tap challenge? I said, it's very simple. Share your lunch with somebody every day. Give something to someone who's poorer than you. Look at your old clothes. Take one or two. Dash them to people who will appreciate them, who need clothes. You are not too poor to help someone poorer than you. I want somebody to tweet this for me. You are never too poor. You are never so poor that you can't help someone poorer. There's someone poorer than you. I don't know if I made myself clear here. So... The reason why the, the, the offering was collected because it was to make sure they remove everyone from um, poverty. Now let's 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 read a clause. I want to read another clause to you guys very carefully. So guys, are you ready now? Let's read this very carefully. Uh, Instagram guys, can you see the Bible? Now if you go here, there were no, I think uh, they are not utilizing offering. Um, judiciously there were no needy people among them read it read it there were no needy people among them not because there were no needy people among them because from time to time people would sell their houses and distribution was made to the needy not to the pastor 
Let's stop the lies. This, there were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses will sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give those in need, not to give the apostles to largess. To give those, can somebody answer me? To give those in need. Can you look at someone beside you and tell them, tap challenge. The tap challenge is perfectly in order with this Bible verse. Yes, the apostles did not say bring a tenth or a tithe of your income. They said those who had brought everything. But what was done with it is where we are tapping into now. Distribution was made to everyone who was in need. So they were removed from that need. Do I have a witness? Now I want us to move a little further to the book of Corinthians. Sorry, my Bible is online, so I'm waiting for it. You can see that the feed is a bit funny. Okay. First Corinthians 6. guys problem with the online bible is you have to wait for the internet to okay first corinthians 4 11 can we all have we gotten there first corinthians 4 11 to this very hour we are hungry and thirsty we are in rags we're brutally treated we're homeless we work hard Let's look at that again. What does he say? We work hard. We have become the scum of the earth. Let's open it in another Bible version right now so we can get another translation for this. All right. Sorry, I'm using two phones at the same time. So please pardon me. To transmit to two different audiences. I don't see why anybody needs an elaborate altar. Hey, let me not go and click on the wrong thing. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why anybody needs an elaborate altar to preach the word of God where you can do it online and get people to buy uh, data finish. Now, if you go to 411, it says, where is 11 again? To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty. We are in rags. We are brutally treated. Can you see it? When we are cursed, we bless. Hallelujah. When we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. We have become the scum of the earth, garbage of the world, right up until on this moment. Does that sound like what the modern day pastors are doing? The apostles were hungry. Despite at several times receiving offering, you know why they were hungry? Because they did not put the offering in a storehouse, they distributed to those in need. There's somebody here on my timeline raining curses on me and whoever is there. Please don't insult the person back. The Bible is clear. The Bible says when we are slandered, we answer kindly. When we are persecuted, we must endure it. When we are cursed, we bless. So bless whoever is cursed. I can see so much profanity on my Instagram handle, but we bless them. We want as much as possible. Nobody can abuse like you. Oh God, when I was in secondary school, I used to abuse people. On a Friday, they would laugh and go home and come and beat me on a Monday. That's how good I was at abusing. So because I'm not abusing, does not mean I don't know how to abuse. It means I'm in the Bible. Now, we have seen what was done with the offering when it was raised. We have also seen that the apostles did not live in this afternoon. 
we have seen that it was not about making money for a church it was about making sure everyone in the church was happy now back to the disciples let's go a bit to Jesus right now let's see how Jesus lived if you go to the book of Matthew I don't even want to go there right now I want to first talk about Jesus triumphant entry now a lot of people there's so much debate about Jesus coming uh, doing the triumphant entry in a donkey some people said princes rode donkeys those days um, yes yes although princes rode donkeys those days the particular instance in which Jesus rode a donkey was to show humility and to fulfill the scripture so I want you to go with me to the Old Testament I want us to go to the book of Zechariah 9 9 okay Zechariah 9 9 look at someone beside you and tell him Zechariah 9 9 if you don't know where Zechariah is okay let me show you where Zechariah is let me try my possible best to describe well Zechariah is just before you have preferred Malachi okay so just click on Zechariah 9 9. So the Bible will pop up. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly. Can we Google the word lowly? Let me finish it, then we'll come and Google the word lowly. Lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Lowly. The King James Version says lowly. Okay? The King James Version. Can you see it? Nine, nine. Can you see the word there? Lowly. My beautiful second half. The better half of me has brought my lunch. Thank you, baby. God bless you for giving me such good food. Okay, so can you see lowly? Thank you, Daniel. Um, Akito, he says, lowly means to a low degree, in a low manner. The king came lowly. Can you guys see it lowly? Now let me, just in case, let me even believe that this, my friend Daniel Akintoye, does not know the meaning of lowly. So me personally, I want to Google lowly. Just what I encourage you, Wikipedia beside me, I have Bible history beside me, I have everything. So let, let's see, let's see. Low bread, low ranking. Can you see that? Proletarian, peasant, poor. Can you see that word? Poor. So if lowly means poor, let's read the Bible again using a synonym of the word lowly. So we're going back to Zechariah 9, 9. And we're, ex uh, we're exchanging the word poor for the word lowly. Because they mean the same thing according to the dictionary. And according to Daniel Akintoye's lovely translation, which I applaud him for. Okay, so, and upon the colt, the colt, the foal of an ass. So he was riding upon a donkey and its child. That doesn't sound like Solomon's uh, stable. So let's Google Solomon's stables. If Jesus came riding on a donkey, So let's let's go to the book of 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 26. All right, this is more Bible verses for you to show you what riches in the Bible were. Solomon had 4000 stalls for chariots and 12000 horses. Can you see it? Can you see it guys? Now that is rich. Not riding on a donkey and the foal of a donkey that the Bible itself tells us is lowly, is poor. Then you 
are now trying to say those days kings rode. Those days kings rode donkeys. But in this particular prophecy, it was not in honor. It was in poverty. It is there. Zechariah 9.9 9. Thank you, Papa Jide. You just brought a Bible verse that I will, I will wrap in my mind where it is. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Papa Jide, please, 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 just hold on. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. I need that verse. You are blessed. Prophecy is explained. Okay? That is... Where is my Zachariah? Uh -huh. Matthew 21, 5. I beg your pardon. I have so much Bible verses in front of me. It says, say to daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and the, the, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. New Living Translation uses the word humble. This is the New Testament now. This is to show the prophecy that was proclaimed in Zechariah. Humble, gentle, gentle. Meek is another word. King James says meek. Humble and meek. Those are unassuming is another word. You can see I'm showing all I'm showing you all the words. Your king is coming to you, he's gentle. He's coming on a colt and a donkey. That in no way shows extravagance. Humility is not a Rolls Royce, it is not a Rolex. No. So if you must ride those, you are not going to make any congregation pay for it. If you make your congregation pay for it, you are engaging in fraud. Okay? Let me go a little bit forward now. I want to go into the New Testament and see Jesus' instruction for his disciples. Now let's all go to the book of Matthew 10, 8. Alright guys, Matthew 10, 8. I'm going to show it to you. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. And he goes on to say, freely you have received, men freely give. The references are also clear. You can see them there. Go out and preach. Okay? Do not carry any gold or silver or copper with you. Now let's go to the book of Luke. Luke also speaks of this. New International Version. If you go to the book of Luke 9.3. Luke 9.3. It says... He told them, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread. You can see that. No bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you, en you enter, stay there until you, have you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet. You can see that. Do not take any money. Nigerian pastors, leave the money. We thank you for commenting on our videos. Please keep commenting. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so for regular updates. Keep watching Juvenis and keep buying Juvenis. Juvenis is published bi-monthly by Pinox Communications Limited. For enquiries, event coverage or advert placement, call 0803-360-8271-0805-787-1199-0702-811-3638 or 0808-152-4499 or visit www.juvenis.punux.net Juvenis Magazine inspiring the young at heart.